Happy St. Patrick's Day. You know, do y'all, I don't see a lot of green out there. Now, you know, oh, there you go, there you go. You know, when you were a kid and you're in school, if you didn't wear green, what happened? You got pinched, okay? So I don't want any pitching going on. Um, okay, can we laugh at ourselves for just a minute? I know we're Baptists. I know we're Baptists. Okay, I get that. But you know, anybody going to go drink any green beer today? No, okay, I guess not. Okay, one more drinking joke. This is the only Baptist drinking joke I know, okay? So we're just going gonna, gonna to laugh at ourselves for a second. Don't be offended. I'm just telling a joke. It's a joke. You ready? Okay, you know why when you go hunting, you never just take one Baptist with you. You always take at least two. Because if you just take one, the Baptist guy will drink all your beer. Okay? I hope nobody was offended by that. It's just a joke. We're just having fun. I need to make one correction. <clears throat> um, in the bulletin, it says that the meet and greet for Larry and Sandy. Everybody know Larry and Sandy? Raise your hand. There they are. Yay. Okay. Okay. The meet and greet in the bulletin says that it's Saturday at 6. Eh. Thanks for playing. That's wrong. Okay? It's Friday at 6, correct? Okay, so the green, the green, is that green? That's green. It's not yellow. It's greenish yellow. Okay, this is correct. 6 o'clock, Friday night. We'll have cookies and coffee and tea and all that other good stuff for you. And uh, we're going to have a great time. Get to know Larry and Sandy, and uh, it's going to be great. All right, good morning. It's great to be here. You know, we started this series a few weeks ago, <laughs> and then I got sick, and uh, we kind of had to punt, and, um, but we're going to pick it up again, okay? This series is called Heroes of the Faith, and basically the simple idea behind this whole sermon series is we're looking at different biblical characters, Okay, we looked at Abraham and Joseph. I'll go over that in just a second. But, but we look at some famous characters in the Bible, and we look at the characteristic that is the most predominant characteristic about their life. So let me ask you a simple question. Have you ever been around somebody who you maybe admire for some reason? There's something about that particular individual that you just see a characteristic in that person that you just like. Maybe they're, they seem to be a really godly person, and you respect that about them. Or maybe they're compassionate. They just seem to be very compassionate. Or maybe they're generous. There's some quality in their life. Um, they're encouraging. They're humorous or whatever. But you see that person and you, you, just, you just enjoy being around them and you like them and you just kind of watch them. And the goal is for you, so it's just natural for us sometimes when, when we're around that kind of person that we want to be like that person. We want to copy their behavior. We want to, a big fancy word, we want to emulate their behavior. Okay? Well, that's basically what that verse right there is saying. The whole basis of the, ser the sermon series is that the people in the Bible, not only did they live for God in the moment that they were alive on this earth, but they also set an example for us to follow. That's the whole purpose of this series is for us to look at different characteristics in different people's lives, biblical characters, real people who lived out their faith and serve the Lord, and for us to look at those characteristics and then try to copy that, if you will, to say, like Abraham. Abraham was the father of faith. It says, the scripture it tells us that Abraham was given this incredible promise that he would become the father of many nations and that, and that he would bear a, a child, and that through that, he would become this father of many nations but he was a hundred years old actually he was 90 years old I believe when God gave him that promise it wasn't it might have even been earlier than that 
But it wasn't until he was 100 and, and his wife Sarah was 90 that he actually gave birth. But at that moment in time, before it ever happened, it says that he believed God. God said, Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation. You're, you're going to have a, a son, and, and through that, you're going, to, you're, going to be good, you're going to be this great nation. And he believed God. He just believed that God was able to do that. And then what does the Scripture tell us? One of the most amazing verses in all of Scripture, it says that he believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. That is the basis for our salvation. Those of us who see Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, the only one who we can trust our life with, the only one we can trust our eternal, our eternal destiny with, when we place our simple faith in him, we rely solely upon him for eternal life, God does what? He reckons to us righteousness. So Abraham is the father of all who would believe in Jesus. We should be like Abraham. We should spend our lives trying to have faith, or just to have faith, have faith in Christ, and, 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 and do that every day of our life. Joseph, Joseph was a great example of somebody who experienced a lot of ups and downs in life. One minute, he was the favorite son. The next minute, he's thrown in prison. The next minute, he's uh, second in command over Egypt. He was a, an example of someone who spiritually endured the ups and downs of life. Now, I know that you and I have been through many ups and downs in life. And we should look at Joseph as an example in Scripture and say, you know what, Lord, things are not always going like I always want. I need to be like Joseph. I need to be like Joseph. I need to spiritually endure the good times and the bad times. This morning, we're going to look at Moses. And the characteristic that I would like you to remember most about Moses is that he was called a servant of God. He served God. He served Yahweh. Yahweh called him uh, late in life to serve him and to do amazing things for him. And he was known in Scripture over and over and over again as a servant of God. And I want us to begin to think about how can I be like Moses? Really simple. Look at what it says, Hebrews 3, 5. Moses was faithful as a servant in all of God's household, bearing witness to what would be spoken by God in the future. You know, what does a faithful servant look like? Well, a lot of us would think, well, they've got to be the smartest person, they've got to be the most powerful person, maybe the most, you know, in charge or whatever. No, that's not true. That's not necessarily true. I, you know, following God does involve some degree of intelligence maybe and, and some degree of talent. But most of all, I think the, the characteristic that you're going to see that is true in Moses and should be true in us is that we have a willing attitude. When, when Christ puts upon your heart, the Holy Spirit of God works in your life and puts upon your heart a clear direction, says, I want you to do this. I want you to follow this path. Are you willing? Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to step up and take a risk maybe? Because it's probably going to involve some risk in following the Lord. What about having a good work ethic? Lord, I'm going to do the very best that I can for you. I'm going to serve you faithfully. You know, the scripture says that we're supposed to serve others as unto the Lord. We're to follow his direction. If he says, you do this, you don't go over here and do that. That's not the idea. That's not being a willing, obedient servant. A willing, obedient servant says, whatever you tell me, master, I will do it. And you put God's desires above your own. And I think we're going to see that in Moses. I want you to realize this, and we're going to come back to this. I'm just going to leave this verse up here for a minute for you to think about. Um, but I just want to quickly go back and remind you of the things that Moses went through in his life. First of all, if you remember, when he was a young child, he was born, it says he was a beautiful child, but he was a slave child. He was born a Hebrew slave. And if you remember, the, the Pharaoh at that time had, had basically, he, it says that he didn't know uh, or, or didn't care for the children of Israel, and he was fearful of them, that they would grow into a great population and overtake them. And so he gave an edict that all the, the, the male children should be what? 
killed. After, we're talking about, we're not talking about abortion before, we're talking about after. They are, a, they are born and they were to be slaughtered. And what did the midwives do? They said, we're not going to obey your command, Pharaoh. We're going we're to fear God. And they did that. And so what happened? He was put in a, in a, a little basket and he was put out on the Nile. And you remember what happened? He floated down and he was noticed by, of all people, Pharaoh's, uh, Pharaoh's sister. And she took mercy on him and took him out of the water. And the, the story goes that, that uh, she actually sent and had a midwife brought in. And it actually turned out to be Moses' mother. And she got to nurse and take care of Moses as he grew into a young boy. But he grew into a household, into the household of Pharaoh. Imagine that. A Hebrew slave suddenly becomes a member of the Egyptian royalty. Can you imagine that? The power that he had. The, the education and the privilege that he had. But you remember the story, how it goes. What happened? One day as a young man, he was out walking around, and I, I assume he must have known that he was a Hebrew because he noticed that uh, one of the Egyptian guards was mistreating a Hebrew, and what did he do? He took it upon himself to take the Egyptian's life. He thought, well, nobody saw that. I guess I'm okay. But then he learned that it had been discovered, and he knew at that point he had lost his privilege, and he fled for his life. He ran for his life, and he ran out into the wilderness. You know the rest of the story there. He lived out in the wilderness, and um, uh, he, was, he was living his life. He, he met and married uh, Zipporah, um, and he lived there for many, many years. And then, at the, and then at the age of 80, now think about this for just a second. Moses is basically living his own life up until the age of 80. Not really serving God, not really knowing Yahweh, not really, you know, in any real way connected with him. And then what happens? He sees the burning bush. And out of the burning bush, the Lord calls to him. And he goes, and he literally goes before the creator of the universe. And then he is called to be a servant. At that moment in his life, Yahweh tells him, I want you to go. You are my chosen instrument, and you will go, and you will speak to Pharaoh, and you will tell him to let my people go. And we know the rest of the story. It's incredible. Um, he was basically appointed by God to be the Jewish leader of the people, um, and he, through incredible divine protection, he goes to Pharaoh multiple times, and he sees God bring plagues upon um, Egypt, Ten, ten different plagues. They uh, finally are given permission to leave Egypt. They celebrate the Passover, and then they, they leave basically pillaging the Egyptian people. They leave, and they go out into the wilderness, um, and then they're followed by the Egyptian army. Remember the story. What happens? They cross through the Red Sea. The Red Sea is parted. God does this incredible intervention he he separates the red sea and the, the the jewish people flee across the red sea and then the the egyptians follow after them and then they're destroyed by the red sea it's amazing and then finally um kind of finish this whole deal here where he he goes to uh, go before god he receives the ten commandments and they make a covenant basically the nation makes a covenant and then moses is given the responsibility of building the tabernacle now, this is where I want you to really see how Moses was an obedient servant. Because if you read through the last several chapters of Exodus, what you see is, is that God carefully gave Moses instruction. This is how I want you to build a taber tabernacle. This is what I want you to do. I want you to make it out of these fabrics. I want you to fashion the mercy seat. I want you to do all of these things. And what does it say about Moses? Moses. Moses did everything just as the Lord commanded him. That's a servant's heart. You see, a servant doesn't go, hey, Lord, you know, I think instead of purple cloth, you ought to have red cloth. How about that? You know, instead of a wooden mercy seat, I think it ought to be made out of brass. Guys be like, what are you talking about, man? You, you need to wake up, Moses. I'm in charge. I'm the master. 
you're the servant. Moses did everything just as the Lord commanded him. God gives you a commandment. His spirit impresses upon you what you're to do for him. And do you just go, you know, I don't think so. I, nah. I think I've got a better way to do things. <laughs> no. Do you see that? You see, Moses, over time, being in God's presence, came to realize that God knows best. And he assumed the role of a servant. You see, a, a servant says, you are my master. You are stronger, more wiser, more powerful than me. And I will follow what you tell me to do. I put myself in a position of being your servant. Lord, what would you like me to do? I'll do it. I'll do it. Do you have that attitude? Do you have that attitude? Now watch this. This is incredible. Watch this next verse. This is a beautiful picture of what happened. Moses had this increasingly intimate relationship with God. As he developed the tabernacle, the cloud of, of God's presence would come into the tabernacle and Moses would go in there and he would fellowship and worship the Lord. And ultimately he did it so often and so frequently that it said that the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Imagine that. To know the God of creation in such an intimate way that you could literally talk to him as though he is your friend. Face to face. Incredible. Now here's what I want you to know. Here's what, I want, there's three things I want you to, to get out of all of this. Because really, again, remember what the, the whole purpose of this series is simply this. We... We want to copy, we want to be like Moses. We want to have a more servant attitude, right? So principle number one, serving the Lord. If you want to follow Christ, it's a lifelong commitment. Are you prepared to serve the Lord faithfully your entire life? You see, when God chose to save you, when you put your faith in Jesus and Jesus' Spirit came into your life to live in your life, then you began this step-by-step, day-by-day process called sanctification. It's a big, fancy religious word, but it basically says that God is changing you day after day after day. Forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the upward call of God in Christ. It's an upward call of God. Closer and closer, more intimate with God, more holy in my living. It's a lifelong commitment. You don't, you don't get to say, I think I'm going to get off the bus right now. I'm going to get off. You can do that. You can do that. But that's not what God's calling us to do. He's calling us to live for Him on a day-by-day -day basis. Now, I know that sounds really basic and really simple, but I think we forget that. We need to be... Lifelong learners. You were saved for a purpose. Not just to save your soul, but that you would faithfully serve him on this earth. Ephesians 2.10 says that we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Not that you are saved by good works, but once you are saved, God has a purpose for your life. And he wants you to know him and be more holy and loving. And you don't get to just say, you know, I think I'll take a day off. It's a life commitment the payoff is this that serving the Lord seeking Christ in this life brings greater revelation turn with me over to Hebrews 12 chapter 12 verse 10 and verse 14 now look at what God's purpose is part of God's purpose in making us greater and greater servants on his behalf, it says, Hebrews 12, verse 10, for they disciplined us, he's talking about our earthly fathers, for a short time as seemed best to them. But he, God our Father, disciplines us for our good so that we may share in his holiness. Look at verse 14. Pursue peace with all men and the sanctification without which no one will see the Lord. Now you need to understand this. That 
like Moses, if you serve God faithfully, if you seek to be his servant, then you, the, the, the scripture teaches, there is a principle in scripture that is taught that Jesus says, the more you love me, the more you'll know me. There is a progressive revelation of who God is and how awesome he is and how incredible he can work in your life if you stay on a path of following him. But if you get off of that path, if you decide you want to follow after some kind of sin or some kind of you know, issue that is really not of God, the revelation stops. You see, it's that habitual sin maybe that you struggle with or, or, or some kind of personal issue that you won't give up on, that you're holding on to, that may pre- be preventing you from knowing God at a deeper and deeper level. Don't you want to be like Moses? Don't you want to be like Moses that says that he talked with God, that he was face-to-face with God? Isn't that some of the payoff? Isn't that why we want to follow Jesus? You see, disobedience, no revelation. Obedience brings understanding and a deeper, deeper relationship with the Lord. Number three, serving the Lord brings a greater intimacy. If you, if you will make up your mind and you will set your heart to seek after Christ and to follow him, he promises you that you will have a greater and greater sense of his presence in your life. That is the payoff. That is essentially really what, frankly, a lot of pastors want to see in their congregation. I want to see y'all growing. I want to see you know Christ on a deeper and deeper level. If you're not doing that, something's wrong. Something's not happening. Something's going on in your life or my life or something that's keeping you from knowing Jesus. Because the deeper you go, the better it is. And and we want to see that. I want to see you grow. The only way you're going to do that is if you apply yourself to love him and to serve him. Now, let me ask a crazy question here for just a second. What if Moses stopped obeying God? Now, we know the end of the story, right? We we know how the story goes. He faithfully served the Lord. Now, he made a few mistakes along the way, okay? But for the most part, he was a faithful servant of God right up to the end of the last day of his life. But let's just hypothetically think for one second What if Moses stopped serving God? Now, how do you think God would feel about that? He'd be like, "Uh, you know what? You're not doing your job, dude. You're kind of slacking off. (laughs) You, You need to wake up, Moses. You see, at the point that Moses stopped serving God, hypothetically, God would have, could have, found another person because you see Moses is not so important that he can defy God's own authority he can't step up and tell God hey God I'm in charge I got this I'll take care of it no 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 that's not how it works you see we have to stay on that path and and the great example of that out of scripture is an example we don't want to follow, which is King Saul. You remember the story about King Saul? He was chosen, you know, to, to be the first king of Israel. Well, what happened? He, he was doing pretty good, but then he was tempted, and he disobeyed God. You remember, he kept some of the, some of the stuff. He was told to destroy all the people and, 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 and not keep any of their material blessings or well-being or whatever. And, and you remember Samuel comes up, and he says, he says to Saul, what is, this, what is this sound of sheep in my ear that I hear, this bleeding of sheep? Why are there sheep here that don't belong to you? You disobeyed God. And as a result, guess what? Your kingship, your reign is cut off. You see, God won't forsake you. He won't leave or forsake you. You'll still know him personally you you've given your heart to Jesus you've trusted in him but at some point if you decide to get off track 
God doesn't have to use you. He can, he can say, until you get back in line with my will, I can't really use you. You're not of any use to me. Do you, you follow what I'm saying? So what does that mean? It means that we have to be lifelong learners. We have to take our faith seriously. We have to say, Lord Jesus, you're telling me that in order to be a disciple of yours, that I have to deny myself, pick up my cross and follow you. I have to seek after you, not my own will. You see, a servant sets aside his own will for that of the master. What do you want me to do, Lord? What do you want me to do? I have to be a lifelong learner. I have to be willing to commit and say, Lord, I'm going to follow you no matter what. I'm going to seek to obey you, not perfectly because I'm going to make mistakes, but I'm going to seek to be a lifelong learner. I'm going to seek greater understanding. I'm going to seek after greater understanding and greater intimacy. And God says, that faithful, loving heart, I will bless you. And you will be like Moses. You will be a faithful servant. So what is, what is it we need to do? What is it we need to do, folks? you got to apply yourself. It's just really simple. If you want to move a rock from here to there, you got to pick it up and move it. you got to apply yourself. The Scripture tells us over and over and over again that we need to press on and press forward with our faith. Don't be lazy. Take it seriously. Take it seriously. God cares if you follow him. God cares if you want to know him. Don't be casual about your faith. Be serious about it. Use your talents for the Lord. You know, the, the uh, parable that Jesus told about the man with the talents you know, he gave some ten, he gave some five, he gave some one. And what did the one guy do, the last guy? He took that one talent that he was given, what did he do? He buried it. He buried it in the ground. Didn't even get any interest on it. And so when the master came back, he gave the one talent back to him. Did, was he commended by his master for that? No. The master looked at him and said, you wicked, lazy slave. What? You know, you should have at least put my money in the bank and I would have got interest off of it. No, you just, you just were fearful, I guess, or whatever reason, you stuck that in the ground and you didn't do anything with it. You see, that's not what God wants you to do with your life. He wants you to serve Him. Will you do it? Will you pursue God like Moses did? You remember the story about Moses, how at that one moment in life, Moses was so caught up in trying to know God. He said, Lord, show me your glory. Do you ever desire that? Do you ever just like, Lord, I want to know you more. I want to know you deeper. Show me your glory. And what did God do? He hit him behind a rock. And as he passed by, he, he experienced some of the glory of God. But he never would have got there if he hadn't desired it, if he hadn't asked for it, if he hadn't sought after it. So you and I need to do that. We need to apply that to our lives. Look at this verse. The summary of Moses was that he did everything just as the Lord commanded him. And I want to tell you that that verse applies to you too. Imagine putting your name in that slot. Wouldn't that be incredible? To say, Stuart did everything just as the Lord commanded him to do. At the end of your life, what a testimony! What a servant! What an incredible statement. I want you to adopt that verse, Exodus 40, 16, and commit to putting your name in that blank. Will you do that? Let's pray.